That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, we got a Black Friday topic for you guys. Um, we're going to try to drop some knowledge from what we see in our communities uh, around the world. I'm going to pass it off to Gibson, and uh, he's going to drop some knowledge on you guys. And I'm just going to sit here and listen and put my two, thought, two cents in whenever it's possible. All right. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. So today on the Black Friday topic, I want to talk about being black in America. I want to talk really about the state of the union for the black man in America. And when I say black man, I don't mean a male, I just mean the black people. But I like to say uh, black man. So uh, the first thing is, you know, we need leadership in, in the black community. We don't have that. We, we have rappers like Ice Cube, uh, Jay-Z, uh, Kanye West, you know, they step forward and they, they try to say that you know, they're the leader of the black community or they say something and then uh, some of the liberal white people put them out there as the leaders of the black community. But in my opinion, they are not leaders in the, in the black community. Uh, but anyway, we have also people like Candace Owens, Officer Tatum, stepping forward to say that they're, they're the leaders of the black community and they're trying to help us to uh, unify. But, you know, Candace Owens, Officer Tatum, very con controversial very combative, they have a Donald Trump approach to uh, getting the message out. And what I mean by Donald Trump approach is when you're talking to them, they're gonna get very emotional, they're gonna get uh, excitable, uh, it's gonna turn into a confrontation, it's gonna get ugly. Uh, but we do have people like uh, Jason Riley, which is a young man, uh, he, he wrote a book about uh, our, our plight and our uh, travels in the United States as, as black people. Uh, but he's very level-headed, and I like listening to him. And then we have two older guys, Larry Elder and Thomas Sewell. These are older men uh, that I believe, you know, understand our plight in America. Now, the thing about that, we got to get unified, and we got to have a game plan, because we have some serious issues in, in our community. Poverty is one of them, and I'm a give us a list of things that I think are problems, but they're not in what I consider to be a numerical order. Uh, this is not number one because it's the most important thing, or this is not number five because it's the least important, but it's just some things that I found in my research that I want to bring to your attention. One of them is poverty. And, and when I was looking at the poverty thing, it, it listed out reasons why you would be in poverty. The number one reason why you would be in poverty is because you're a single mother. You have a 44% chance of being in poverty if you have children and you're not married. Number two, unemployed. You have a 30% chance of living, uh, I'm kind of surprised by this, that you have a 30% chance of living in poverty if you're not working. I don't know why it's not 100%, but I guess they were assuming that you live with your mom and daddy, or you're living with somebody who has some type of income, so you, I don't know. They didn't mention that, but I don't understand that. But anyway, it's 30% chance that you would be uh, in poverty if you're unemployed. Number three is if you're disabled, you have a 25% chance of being in, uh, in poverty if you're disabled. Uh, you, number four, it, there's a uh, chance that you would be in poverty if you don't have a high school diploma. And then number five, now Will, you're gonna find this very interesting. Interesting. Number five, the fifth reason why you would be in poverty is if you were uh, a black man in America. I looked it up myself, I was shocked by that. But just being born black, you have a 23% chance of being in poverty. That's a problem. You're, you're a newborn baby. You're just getting here, and you're already 23% more likely to be in poverty. That's a parenting problem, and we're going to talk about that later. Anyway, I felt like that was a problem. I also feel like, you know, uh, education is an issue. Uh, we don't own housing uh, houses. We are 58% of us are renting houses. As a community, we make up about 13, 14% of the population. And of that 13, 14%, 58% of us, almost 60% of us are renting. Uh, of the, you know, we're in prison, 33% of that 14% is in prison. That doesn't even count the people that got out of prison, but you're still on probation, or you have a, you know, you, you got a monitor on your leg. Uh, we're not even counting those people, but you're in prison, that's 33%. Unbelievable. Uh, our income disparity, we had 41% for the family, $41,000, not 41%, I'm sorry, $41,000 for the median income of a family. 
as compared to 63,000 for everyone else. We're 29% married, so that means that we're not getting married. 48% uh, of women have, 48% of black women have never been married. 48% of black women have never been married. We're talking about uh, grown people now, not children, but 48% of grown women have never been married. The poverty level for us is 23%. Uh, so, you know, we, we're, in a, we're in a bind here. We're in a bind. As far as being in prison, since we talked about that, we're in prison for drugs, robbery, some, something to deal with property, uh, murder, and assault. So 21% of the people in prison, which I think we said was 33% of us are in prison, of that 33%, 21% is in prison for some type of drug uh, uh, crime. 18% of us are in prison because of some type of robbery. 15.2% uh, of us are in prison for some kind of property uh, situation. I don't know, they didn't break that down, but it's some kind of property situation. We're in prison for that. 14% uh, of us are in prison for murder. 10% of us are in prison for some type of an assault. And uh, disorderly conduct is 8%. So drugs, robbery, property, murder, assault, and, and some kind of uh, public uh, outburst is why we mainly in prison. So we got to get that under control. Uh, our employment situation, 27% of black men are not in the labor force for whatever reason, 27%. We're talking about grown men, not children, but grown men, 27%, as opposed to 17% of everybody else. Women, 25% of women are not in the labor force for whatever reason compared to 28% of everybody else. So that's close to the norm, but we need to get those numbers down under 10%. So these are some issues that we have uh, that we need to address. And mainly, we need leadership. And we need a platform. I, I think that the Ice Cube platform was, was, was good, but I think the first thing the government needs to do is stop helping us. Now, I know this is where we're gonna get the kickback. What I just gave you was statistics uh, from, the, uh, from the black, let me get it, blackdemographics.com. So if you wanna check the numbers that I just gave you, go to blackdemographics.com and check those numbers that I gave you. But here's where the real meat comes into play, where the rubber meets the road. The government has got to stop helping us. We've got to stop asking for handouts. When the government is substituting a husband with a government check, that is a problem. I, I know a lot of people are not going to agree with that statement, but we've got to get the government out of our business. And here's another issue that I think we need to address, and it's the black woman. Everywhere I go, the black woman is a queen. Everywhere I go, the black man is a king. Everywhere I go, black people have self-proclaimed themselves to be something that they're not. 33% of us are in prison. So we're not kings and we're not queens. But what we are uh, is in need of some help. So the first thing is the government has got to stop helping us. The second thing is if the government is going to help us, we, what we need is policy in place to help us with the opportunities. Now, you're saying to me, well, that's a contradiction, uh, Gibson. You're saying you don't want the government to help us, but then at the same time, you're saying the government needs to put in some, some policies and some procedures. Yes, that's true, and I mean that, but it's two different things to me. All I need the government to do is level the playing field. They don't need to give me anything. Don't give me a check. Don't give me... Uh, housing, don't give me any of those things. Just give me the opportunity that I should have had when slavery ended. You did, when you said you was going to give me 40 acres, I didn't get it. When you said I was going to get that mule, I didn't get it. But right now, I need you to give me the same fair opportunity. Now, don't help me. Don't give me a check to replace my dad. Don't give me a job don't give me, uh, you know, different things that you think are going to help me. You know what? Let me digress for just a minute. There was a, there was a statement that, that people asked, when was America great? I never could answer that question on my own when America was great. I, I don't know when that time period was. But I do know when Black people was thriving. I do know when that was. And it was 
way back in the 1920s and the 1930s when black people had stuff. We had a grocery store. We had a dry cleaners. We had a gas station. We had taxi cabs. We had banks. We had insurance coming. When we had those things, the unemployment rate amongst the uh, black people was very low. Research it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Research it for yourself. Black people, we wasn't having problems. Now we had some racial issues, yeah. But the racial issues became because we wanted to go over there rather than stay over here. We thought that the white man's ice was colder than our ice. We thought the white man's pound cake tasted better than our pound cake. We thought the white man's clothes was better than our clothes. His bank was, was uh, the dollar at his bank was better than the dollar at my bank. And so we wanted to integrate. We wanted to go where he was going, eat at his uh, restaurant, shop in his store, and we didn't appreciate our own stores. At that time, you saw the decline of Black America. Now, I'm not saying that we need to get back to that. No, because we're a long way from that. But what I am saying is we need to get back to taking care of ourselves and stop asking for handouts because, and I don't want to sound like I'm a prejudiced person because I'm not, but I do want the same opportunity as everybody else. The white man has put us in a situation where we are dependent on him. And we cannot depend on him because he doesn't have our best interest at heart. He, he doesn't have it. So we have to put our own best interests at heart and we have to do our own thing. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, the state of black America is we in, we in decline. We got to get back to educating ourselves. If it, even, even the education part, even if it's, you know, just getting a, edu a high school education, that is the first step in getting out of poverty. On that list I gave you, not having a high school diploma was one of the reasons why you would be in poverty. So if we could just get a high school education, that would take us off that list. Now we're still black in America, so you still have a 23% chance of being in poverty. But if you get the high school education, your chances now decrease that you would be in poverty. And so uh, that's all I'm, I want to say today. I think that we need to get a game plan. I think we need to have some of our, our top minds along with our rappers, because they have a different perspective uh, about, you know what, speaking of rappers, let me, let me make one more comment and I'm gonna let it go. There's two different types of black people in America. But when we say to America, African-American, the first thought that comes into black people's mind and the white man's mind is the ghetto black man. Driving around a small car with big tires, music blaring, pants sagging, talking crazy. I'm gonna just say the, the thug life type black person. That, that's what most people think about, even us. That's what we think about. But the reality is there's another black man also that lives in America. And he is a, a college educated or a small business owner. And he's doing his own thing, you know, without all of that music and sagging pants. So when he goes to the north side of town and get a house, the white people looking at him like, what you doing over here? Why are you not living on the south side? So then that same black man, he'll go to the south side and buy him a house and the black people over there are saying, what you doing over here? You making, why are you over here with us? You know, you should be living on the north side. So that black man, doesn't have, he doesn't have a home. He doesn't have anywhere to go. And so black people look at him and call him Uncle Tom and the white people look at him and call him O.J. Simpson. We don't have nowhere to go. We need to, we need to shut that down because we're all black people. All of us are black people. And uh, I don't know if we all have the same experiences because I, you know, you weren't necessarily raised like that, some of us. But at the same time, all of us have experienced racism, hatred, and prejudice. So we got to, we got to do something with that too. I don't, have to, I don't have a solution for that just yet, but I did want to put that on your hearts and minds so that you would think about it. And uh, like I said, again, go back to uh, blackdemographics.com. Check the numbers that I gave you. Look at them for yourselves and uh, comment, subscribe below. And make absolutely sure that you share this video with other people because this is how we're going to get the ball rolling is through dialogue. There you have it, man. I, uh, I uh, didn't know those numbers coming into everything. Uh, those numbers, especially that 23% just for being black is uh, – 
it's quite a uh, head scratcher. Um, to be honest with you, I can definitely understand the uh, non-educated part of it. I can do understand the single parent of it. Um, but yeah, that's that's craziness. But I do, uh, I do think, I do think this will that the United States owes the black man reparations. I thought about it long and hard, and I, I believe in my heart that the black man needs reparations. But I don't think that they need to give us those reparations in form of a, of a check. I, I don't believe that. I think they need to give us those reparations in, 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 uh, in the form of education. I wrote some notes down on that and I wanna talk about that briefly if I may. And now I don't know what I did with the notes, but I, I do know this, we need, that, we need those reparations in the form of, it, of education. Here it is right here. So the first thing we gotta get is, uh, is a high school education. We gotta get that. We gotta get that. Then I think where the reparations come into play, every black person in America needs to be able to go to college for free. Every black person. And I mean from college all the way through the PhD. If that's what you want, go get it, it's on me. And then I think that for all the people that don't wanna go to college, because going to college is not for everybody, I think they need to be able to go to, to some trade school and learn a trade, a trade that can get them a viable job, a job where they can have decent income to take care of themselves, a job where they have health care, you know, and a job that's, that's not going to play out, you know, in, in two or three years. And then the last thing I think that we need uh, is health care. We need, we need to learn how to eat better. We need to learn how to take care of ourselves better because we don't go to the doctor. You know, our, our lifespan is very short. Uh, I have a higher percent chance of dying by the police than I do of dying of old age. You know, so we, we got to do something about that. But, you know, that, that's what another conversation. I need to do some more research to get that all lined out. But I, I, I did want to share that today on, on our show, The State of the Black Man in America. There you have it. Like, comment, subscribe below, people. And uh, we'll be back next week with another topic um, going in on um, some other issues that we see in the Black community. So that's Bill. That's Bill. Peace.